Hi traders, welcome to FXDD webinar. Today, money management and compounding. My name is Nenad, I'm a professional trader uh, and uh, I have been and will be leading you through the path of Forex trading. And when you finish with uh, all these webinars, guys, uh, you need to definitely, definitely check our live trading. And our live trading has already started. Uh, if you have the time, join. Uh, this is the web address. Uh, I will uh, type it here and you will, you can join our uh, live trading also because nothing is good if we just talk. We need to make money. That is always my point. So with this education, premium Forex education on FXDD, you should be able to make money and be a profitable trader. So before we start, always. Foreign exchange trading carries a high level of risk and it's not suitable for all investors. Have in mind that leverage creates additional risk and loss exposure. Please educate yourself on the risk associated with Forex trading and have in mind that everything you hear and see here is my personal opinion only. These are web addresses or this is the web address that you can join. Sign up. Uh, these uh, webinars are being recorded and, uh, and will be uploaded to YouTube channel, FXDD YouTube channel. Please check it out and check, of course, the performance. For example, yesterday we had excellent trade again on our FXDD live account. So we are uh, really, really hammering it now. You can always check it here. And of course, it's for you guys to see. We are always transparent. Okay. So. Today's agenda, money management, stop loss, a lot size calculation and compounding. These are very, very important points for all traders and uh, each trader should really stick to the rules religiously. Have in mind that uh, in my opinion, uh, money management and risk management is the single most important thing when trading guys okay that is the single most important thing out of all important things so money management is crucial in forex trading you can have a good system and a good method but without a good money management nothing will help you out remember guys you are trading the risk and i always repeat it because that is the fact you are trading the risk for example you made uh let's say 100 pips with 0 0.1 lot and then you just made one or, or two bad trades with a full lot let's say of 50 pips stop loss everything will fall apart so two bad trades can kill out your 100 good trades if you don't think about the position size and uh, position uh uh positioning in the market generally before you uh actually delve deeper into forex trading and start uh, with the systems for example that i showed you have in mind that learning proper risk management is the hardest part for me it was maybe i i can i can say the hardest part of understanding the price structure dividing it on different uh terms and actually uh, acknowledging that the risk management is the single most important thing in Forex trading. Uh, but I will show you how you can do it. Uh, it will take some um, time. Yeah, I mean, practice. You can always demo practice it before going to live. But definitely, uh, when you master it, uh, your Forex trading will become uh, like you. I, I think it, it's my opinion because I'm in love in Forex, guys, in Forex market. And I think that you will be in love too. Believe me, guys, if you if you master that final crucial step of risk management, that is 50 steps towards success in Forex trading. So uh, money management uh, equals to entering the trades, exiting the trades, scaling out and scaling in. Uh, we will have a special also webinar dedicated to scaling out and scaling in. We don't have uh, the time today to cover all of this, what I'm, uh, what I uh, will be talking about, but uh, entering and exiting, it's system based, right? But scaling out and scaling in, uh, usually is not system based, but with good methods such as my Camarilla MACD, it can be achieved, of course, 
And uh, when I trade, I always uh, scale out and scale in. Uh, that is, uh, again, one of the most important parts that we will cover in uh, later, uh, during our education in later sessions. But we go step by step. Always be patient. You are uh, in the right hands. Uh, I, I won't let you down, I promise. We'll give you the best possible uh, out of all, everything from this uh, Forex world. So stop loss. What is a stop loss? Guys, stop loss is a simple technique uh, that we use to protect our equity. It's a very simple technique. Uh, and uh, everyone, everyone, everyone uh, should use stop loss. Uh, forget about uh, different forums, uh, people who tell you don't use stop loss. It's nonsense, guys. Okay, you, you don't need to use a stop loss. If you have a million dollar account, put one lot. You won't lose it. Or if you have a 100,000 euro account, trade with 0 0.1 lot, will you lose it? Probably not, right? So you don't need to put a stop loss. But who will do that? Really, let's be honest. Who is going to do that? If you trade with the money, you use leverage, right? So you need to use a stop loss, guys. Believe me, stop loss is excellent. Stop loss is a must. Stop loss will save your account. Believe me, guys. That is, I never, ever, ever trade without a stop loss. And you can check my FX book. Go to my Torrential FX, my FX book. I provide my FX book links. My trades are transparent. Everything is transparent. So, yeah, why not? So, guys, stop loss is a must. Remember that. Not using it on leverage trades can end your career in Forex market. And it can end it quickly in a blink of an eye. I have witnessed it. I, I, I've seen it many times before, guys. Not using it on leverage trades will end your career in Forex market. Sooner or later, except, as I said, if you have big account and you trade with 0 0.1 or 1 lot, it's okay. Why? But how much you will earn, really? Quick exit of the trade, when it goes below or touches the stop loss and the peace of mind. Guys, it's a peace of mind. For example, I go to sleep. I leave some of my trades. And what can happen is, during low liquidity, Usually during Wellington Open, New Zealand dollar session, there is low liquidity. You will see uh, that uh, spreads are widening. It's normal thing. Have in mind that spread widening uh, around midnight platform time, or it's it's basically uh, 11 or 12 GMT, depending on the time zone. Uh, you will see that spreads are widening. It's normal, and it marks low liquidity period. And for example, if you if you go to sleep or you're out of your uh, trading station, you're not closed. What can happen is usually there can be some gaps. And if a gap hits you, your stop loss wouldn't, guys, save you. Because usually gaps are not covered by, by stop losses. That is why you need to use stop loss in your trading, guys. Always put a stop loss before you go. Uh, and when market opens, if anything is close to stop loss, it will hit it. It won't gap you out suddenly. For example, I traded Euro Swissy, and fortunately for me, uh, my stop loss wasn't hit, and I lost 30, uh, only 20 or 30 pips when uh, the Swiss National Bank decided to break the floor. And if I hadn't used my stop loss, imagine what could have happened with my account. I would probably go into a negative territory, right? So, uh, especially guys with those kind of events. Please use stop loss. It's a must. It's a must, believe me. Disconnection proof. One thing that is also important. Your PC suddenly runs out of power because, I don't know, there is a blackout or a brownout. Suddenly something changes with electricity. And basically your stop loss has been set on server. So it doesn't. you don't depend on your own PC for sudden disconnections when you set a stop loss it's set on server on fxdd so you don't need to worry about some disconnections uh, uh power outages or let's say blackouts it's okay it's set on server it's a platform and function proof what if a platform freezes believe me guys a lot of custom-made indicators that are not coded well can freeze your platform if your platform freeze 
freezes, then you can be in problem. You can manage your trade. You can enter. You can basically you can do nothing. You just it's just frozen. So you need to shut it down. You, usually you need to reinstall it. I, I've been witnessing it many times before. Uh, I, I use my own indicators now, custom coded. Uh, but I know that a lot of coders simply sometimes uh, don't code it well and it can freeze up your flat platform. Uh, it's a good thing, again, that you use a stop loss because in that, if that happens, if your platform is frozen, again, your stop loss is on the server. So you don't need to worry about, uh, about uh, managing your trade uh, if you cannot manage your trade because your PC is not going uh, well. Develop a habit of placing a stop loss. You need to develop a habit. Practice it. Do it, guys. I know the hardest part is where to put a stop loss. I will show you today how I do it, how you can do it, three different ways how to place a, a, a stop loss. So stop loss techniques are percentage stop, technical stop, and confluence stop. Have in mind that different time frames use different stops. I particularly don't trade on low very low time frames really uh, i usually trade on one hour time frame uh four hour time frame i can do 15 minute trading well back in days i was also doing scalping five minutes but as i say i am uh, mostly trading my camera make the mtf method and it's done on one hour time frame that is the best compromise between capturing a good amount of pips and uh, uh, re uh releasing my time because I'm very very busy and honestly guys uh, I cannot stare at charts uh, each uh, day 24 7 and click 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 like scalping like crazy it's not my style so different time frames use different stops uh, five minute one minute time frame you can usually trade with one minute you can trade with 10 pip stop loss while if you put a 10 pip stop loss on four hour you will always be stopped out so different time frames use different stops now, this is the example of my favorite stop. It's called technical stop, guys, okay? So we are talking about three different things, okay? Now, technical stop. Uh, usually it's determined with a swing high and low. We use candlesticks or pivot points or combination of both. It's the most common uh, for all traders. So most traders, guys, use stop loss. For example, uh, let's say that we are long, that we been long, for example, here, on the, the euro dollar and i see the comment uh nice trade yesterday good job nana thank you velislav uh yeah uh, i yeah we did a euro dollar trade you, you can watch it it's it, uh it, it 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 has already been uploaded to fxdd youtube channel uh this was my entry and bang it shoot it up so yeah we had a good number of pips on yesterday uh euro dollar trade if you traded with us you could have made more than 80 pips guys it's a free money guys yeah i'm telling you this is what i trade right so basically that is how i call it okay because that signal that i gave you yesterday that trading idea that i gave you yesterday on a trading session was i think uh well as i said i expected it to go up and it was a perfect trade so let's say that we have traded from this spot okay now uh, i will remove uh, the fibonacci so uh, you don't need to actually let me just remove the fibonacci here okay uh Fibo, we don't need it we don't need it uh, we don't need this horizontal lines yeah i will i will actually delete it by my hand like this so let's say we were along from this spot okay and let's say that today's level is also this one, yesterday's level. So where would we put our stop loss? So let's say that we were long here, okay? And uh, if we use a swing low, swing low is 20 pips, okay? So we can put a stop loss, usually, how I do it. Because of uh, because every broker has a different spreads and uh, every broker basically uh, might, I mean, not all the time, but it might show because of the uh, closing time uh, and the, the server time. Uh, these candlesticks can be different. So that is why I always add in between, let's say, 7 and 10 pips, including the spread, whatever, uh, to my stop loss level. So if this trade was like 20 pips, you see this swing low. Okay, this is a swing low here. And uh, here uh, on the, this uh, screen, 
you can see the low of this candle is uh, 1405. The high of this candle when we received the signal was uh, 1426. So it's 21 pip. So I would place it like 28 pip away from uh, my entry point. So if my entry was at uh, 1426, I would place my stop loss around 1398, for example. Then there is another thing. If you want to use confluence stop, then you used to put it below the ATR or below this daily L5. In that case, let's say that the ATR was also here yesterday, the, the, the low. So I would place my stop loss exactly here. So it would be 45 pips. Guys, now this is important. It doesn't matter how big your stop loss, uh, stop loss is. It can be big, uh, like 35 pips, and it can be 135 pips. The risk that you put into the stop loss is what it matters. So if your account is $10,500, determine what is uh, based on the stop loss. How much is 1%, 2%, or 3%? I do it uh, with this script, but you can also do it uh, with, uh, I will show you an Excel file. It's easy. For example, here, uh, I uh, just uh, include the risk percentage. Like uh, I want to risk 3% of this account and my stop loss is, let's say, 50 pips. When I press OK, it will calculate the proper lot size for 3% of risk on a trade with on this account with 50% stop loss. That is how you can do it, guys. With uh, the script, uh, we, I, can, I will show you in an Excel file. Also, uh, if you want it, you can uh, send it to uh, send an email, guys. Uh, I will, this is uh, free for you, so no problem. Uh, risk percentage, you can enter 1% one, uh, 1 of risk, for example, with a stop loss of 35 pips. So that is how we usually do. But as I say, uh, you just need to know where you would you put your stop loss. My favorite way is to calculate the stop loss size based on uh, previous low or confluence. Here, for example, let's say that we enter this trade. So our stop loss based on previous swing high. So this was a previous swing high because this is not a swing high. This was previous swing high, most obvious swing high. When you look at last uh, several candles or when you just flip your charts. So this was the most obvious swing low here for this trade. This would be most obvious swing high here. So my trade would be approximately, let's say, uh, 39, 40, 47 pips. I would put it there. For example, this signal, shooting star inside Bollinger Bands, my signal is here. It's too low. 10 pips is nothing. So I would go with next confluence, that is Bollinger Band. So, or next swing. Where was next swing? Here. Again, it was not that high, but let's mark it. Previous swing, most obvious swing. This is a signal. So, yeah, it's okay. 23, it's 30 pip total stop. And it also is a confluence stop because you use... Uh, Bollinger Band, you can use pivot points, whatever you wish, guys. But previous swings are technical stops. Previous swing high for a short trade or a previous swing low, most obvious swing low for a long trade. We can also use this. This was also a good, stop, but it's not a big difference here between this and this. So I would use a confluence stop. Usually, uh, intraday trades on Forex pairs that I trade, and I trade all major pairs, including GBPN, GBPOD, uh, GBP Swissy, GBP New Zealand, uh, are basically in between uh, 30, 25 to 45 pips on one hour time frame. Because of the candle sizes, because of these levels, usually in between 25 and 45. I think the average is like uh, 30, 35 pips. Also, guys, uh, here, uh, for example, uh, uh, if you want to, uh, let's say, place pivot points, you can also use pivot point. Uh, like if you traded this one, this signal here, your, your stop loss could be just below this pivot point. So it would be like 50 pips overall. Again, it's, it's how much risk you put into the trade. So here, as I said, uh, money management calculator also can tell me if I want to use 2% of risk on this account with 50 uh, pip stop loss. So you can do it also from your head. You can do it manually. You can do it low risk. You can trade this account with 0 0.10, 0 0.20 lots, usually most of the time with a fixed stop loss of, let's say, 
uh, 50 pips. So if you lose, you won't lose much, right? Uh, but if you put a full lot here, guys, uh, if you put a full lot here, then that could be a problem because if you use 50 pip uh, stop loss with a full lot, that can easily mess up with almost all the profits. So that is why money management is really the, the, the most important part. Next thing that I want to show you, okay, is equity stop. That's a predetermined percentage of traders' account. Let's say 1%. Well, uh, positional traders, swing traders uh, usually use it. Uh, I think that, in my opinion, it's a form of arbitrary arbitrary stop loss. I don't do it, uh, but uh, let's say that uh, you can always risk predetermined percentage of your account. So your account is, let's say, uh, 10,000. Uh, your risk per trade is always the same, 1%. So uh, with each trade, you would be risking 1%. You need to put that, again, 1% into your stop loss or you need to watch the trade and if a trade goes above that one percent you close it so uh, it's simply uh, one of the tools uh, that you can mix up with technical stops and i say it again it's easily mixed up if you risk uh, let's say two percent with certain stop loss size it's a mix uh, again of technical stop and this arbitrary stop loss but technical stop is the way uh, how i do it and i advise you to do it watch previous swings on candles okay watch pivot points and just use the confluence i'm saying on one hour time frame stops are usually between 35 and 55 pips uh, 25 and uh, 45 pips sometimes on uh, uh, bigger pairs like bigger atr pairs such as for example gbp yen they can go up to 55 pips uh, because the average true range is 126 pips see here that is the average true range. It means that the pair is more volatile than the euro dollar that has only 70 pips, let alone Australian uh, dollar that has only, yeah, also 71 pips for the last five days. New Zealand cat, 63 pips. You see, those are low volatile pairs. But for example, GDP New Zealand, the beast, 175. So guys, uh, you see, it's like uh, for the GDP New Zealand, sometimes your stop loss would be like probably 60 pips. For example, this trade, this long signal here, I would have placed my stop loss probably here or yeah, it's too much really. But you see already previous swing or this swing. Let's use previous most obvious swing, 78, so 85 pips on GBP New Zealand. Sometimes it's very hard to justify risk to reward because it only made 56 pips before dropping. So that is why I'm saying it's important to pick the pair that you want to trade. Do not use uh, huge stop losses, guys, or you can, but you need to put a, a smaller risk into that trade. As I'm saying, stop loss is dynamic thing. Risk is fixed thing. I use usually between 1% and 3% for my trades. Okay. Uh, next thing that uh, I want to tell you is percentage stop. So percentage stop, guys are uh, typical stops that you use for different forms of trading. If you use intraday trades, you will probably risk in between 1% and 3%. But if you move to 4-hour time frame, your uh, risk could be uh, 10% because you will be trading intraday. Uh, you will leave one position and or two positions with overall risk of 2%, 10% and leave it for a full week. If you want to do monthly trades, then uh, the average is 20% risk for monthly trades. So in, in one month, you can risk up to 20%. For investments, guys, it takes months. Sometimes it takes years. Usually it's 35%. Uh, when I'm managing, uh, let's say when I trade or manage big accounts like 100,000 euros and more, uh, usually 35% uh, is the highest drawdown that investors uh, will let me make or will let me go into that 35 percent so that is why i'm saying from my personal experience this is it and i've been managing big accounts from hundred thousand up so uh, typical stops go from one to three for intraday trades 10 percent for interweek 20 percent for monthly trades 35 for investments again guys if anything is not clear just uh, go ahead and ask me because now we are moving to uh, compounding uh, important thing do not forget that my favorite way and the way how i trade is to use previous swings high and lows so 
this is a swing this is my entry previous low was here you see too big gbp new zealand is just for more experienced traders contrary to let's say dollar yen uh, uh euro dollar this is uh, the entry previous swing wow this was really really most obvious let's use i mean most obvious swing was seven pips but i would use confluence then if i spot let's say an important level here and usually there is camarilla level let's say i see camarilla level here i would definitely use camarilla level because the first swing was only six pips but then the previous swing was 93 pips it's not good so i would use camarilla level always use guys previous swing highs previous swing lows uh, pivot points and confluence of uh, let's say uh, uh swings and uh, pivot points or swings and let's say bollinger bands that is how i do it uh and put a uh, predetermined risk into your uh, trade so do not risk more than you can afford guys uh, next thing uh, that we will cover is money management calculator guys okay this is it and this is how it looks on uh i will move it here so this is a forex money management calculator if you want uh, it, it you, you can have it this is the account size this determines risk per trade uh, this is simply different from uh, maybe you would like to have it more thorough than my script that i showed you but this is everything is self-explanatory because you have uh, everything is explained here this is the account info you need to know uh, what is your risk entry stop loss first target if you scale in uh, if you actually scale out and currency pip value you can also do it usually you can leave it as 10 uh, but uh, here it says easily money value for one pip if you trade one standard lot uh, if not you can divide it with let's say one if you use mini lots and so on so you can use script you can use this uh, i think uh, both are fine whichever you prefer of course okay and now compounding guys uh yeah the first profit what is compounding uh this is one of the things that can change your life but you need to religiously stick to it you know it's hard it takes a lot of discipline and patience but compounding is one of the strongest things that you can do with your money management in forex basically it means that the first profit taken is added to the account balance to create a new larger account balance then the next profit is based on previews and netted to the next larger balance. And it will give you an exponential growth of a sum of money by continuously reinvesting all profits. So as a very basic example, let's assume that we have thousand pounds in our trading account, dollars, whatever. If we were to make a 10% return every month for a year and not reinvest any of it, we would have made 120% return equating to thousand and 200 but guys watch this what happens if we actually build it this is compounding calculator let's say starting balance is ten thousand. okay we go with only 10 pips per day okay and we made like this 30 pips 300 dollars so starting on a next day we would make you see it here 10 1610 10930 and so on and so on until we compound it this is pure math this is not science fiction but this is hard if you want to withdraw the money or you are not consistent with your trading let's say that you want to use 0 0.1 here guys again with 0 0.10 dollars per pip Watch this, guys, how it compounds. Again, starting bonus is great because you will be always making more than money, more money that, than the bank can offer you. If you can make, guys, 10 times, 5 times what bank gives you per year in a month, you're great, guys. Believe me, you're great. So with only a small risk, you can compound it here easily following the rules let's say 30 pip per day or you can actually change it it doesn't need to be you can switch this to let's say one percent 
So you, you're risking and making only 1% per day. You will still be making money. If you go with slightly higher lot size, for example, you can do it with, uh, let's say, 10 people per day, 0 0.50, I would say, here. See now how it exponentially grows. But you need to be consistent. You need to be consistent with your risk. You need to be consistent with your trades. With a full lot, guys, on this account, I know it's hard, but it, you can, if you want, you might try it, okay? This is it. Or $10 per pip, guys, or let's say $1 per pip only. Watch this. You can make it, guys. This is compounding. And compounding is one of the biggest and the best things in Forex market if you know how to use it co correctly. So the advantages of compounding, it's a fast way of building the account. So you don't withdraw the money. You're adding profits to profits. It's a math, guys. You can start with lower account. You don't need to have huge account. But the higher the balance, the higher your profits will be. It's suitable for long-term investments. And of course, the bigger the account, and it will give you the higher volume that can be traded. So it's a great thing, guys. If you want a company calculator, just send us an email. Our email is info at elitecurrency.com or torrentialfxemail.com. You can receive these calculators for free, of course. Uh, if you have any questions, guys, uh, feel free to ask. If not, uh, I assume that everything is clear. I try to be always, as always, uh, pretty clear and concise. Uh, sign up for more trading webinars, guys. Uh, next week, we will also have live trading again, educational webinars. And don't worry, you are in good hands, guys. I'm taking care of you, and I will lead you, if you, if you want to listen to me, to... Uh, to become a profitable Forex trader. It needs patience, it needs time, but it is achievable, guys. Everything is clear, I don't see any questions. I wish you a great trading day, guys, and a lot of pips. Talk to you soon. Cheers, everyone.